So these little guys are five week old today. They, uh, they've had their eyes open for roughly a week. And uh, you see how big they're getting? This is one of the big bucks. So he's a little bigger than the females. Um, but they haven't shown as much sexual dimorphism quite yet at this age. But you are starting to tell that the bucks are a little bigger. Um, in the next few weeks, their sexual dimorphism will become more pronounced. See, this is one of our big bucks. And um, here's one of our more average sized does. So you can see they're a little bigger. But it's not significant quite yet. But they've got their eyes all open. And you want to hold one, huh? What? Oh, you want to hold one? Oh, okay. They've got claws now, huh? You're like, ah, he's going to get you, huh? You know she's got claws now. And you, yeah, and little sharp teeth. Oh, give her a kiss. Oh, good job. <laughs> okay, so we're going to feed these little guys. So we're going to start out by laying a little trail. Give them a nice little trail to follow, make it real obvious. And we'll see how they do as far as what they've improved upon when it comes to locating. That one looks like it's smelling something. I think that's green. This one's blue. Careful, don't fall. Good job. Okay, so I left for a minute. Is this green or yeah, is that blue? green and blue. So green has consistently been one of the best, if not the best tracker. Blue last night actually couldn't even find it. I had to take her to it. She just laid in a ball and didn't even look for it. Green and yellow, and surprisingly yellow hasn't even woke up to find it yet. I guess she's not very hungry. Have consistently been the best. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. I think I need a basil. I love you. Um, so green. Oh, looks like I woke yellow up. Look at yellow. Yellow searching. She 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 was just too sleepy to realize that she was missing anything. She's following the trail a little bit. There she goes. And yellow found it. Good girl, yellow. You figured it out. But usually yellow's on it pretty quick. Yellow and green are very consistent at being the first ones here to feed. And then some of the other ones I actually have to help uh, to get on it at all because they're too busy sleeping. And they don't realize it. And yellow's trying to eat the face here. Let's move yellow over here. Good job, Yellow. Let's move you over to the food. Oh, there we go. These guys are waking up now. Come find the food, guys. So I've been doing this as a bit of a kind of semi-training opportunity, but I've also been using it as an opportunity to judge the baby mink and get to know which ones have a natural inclination to find the prey the quickest um, and it's been interesting because it's been very consistent yellow and green have very consistently been the top performers the other ones kind of hit and miss green and yellow have been the most consistent and today yellow was asleep I had to wake her up before she found it but green as usual I left the room and was was doing something with olive and came back and of course green was already on it so she's been very consistent and little green I actually gave her a name um, her name is Mamba as far as personalities, I've got two favorites right now, and I, I can't decide which one I like better. My two favorites right now are Mamba, and the only two I've given names are Mamba, the little green collar girl. Um, I really like Yellow, but I haven't given her a name yet. She's one of my favorites. And then my other favorite is this little girl who I've named Piranha. She's the red collar girl. I named her piranha because she's such a feisty little thing she's a little bit smaller and she's kind of square built like a piranha and she just bites she actually latched onto my nose it was kind of funny so she's kind of a feisty little thing she fights with the other mink a lot she's really voracious when she eats so i named her piranha 
I, I haven't named any of the others yet, and I don't know if I will. I'm obviously not keeping them all. Um, but the name, um, the names have just kind of stuck for now. So I've actually started potty training these little guys. Um, I made a, I have an, a little litter pan that I made out of an old um, bucket. It used to be an icing bucket at Walmart. Anyway, I took it and made a little litter pan out of it. And um, so I've been training these guys for the last week to use the litter pan. And it uh, helps keep them clean. So they already know if I put them down in the litter pan, they automatically want to go. And um, they're pretty clean, so by nature, if they smell that those other droppings in there, then they want to go. It looks like Green's looking for something. So anytime you see the little mink kind of looking around like they're looking for something, there's a good chance they're looking for a bathroom. So we just pick them up and put them in the litter box, and away they go. So they've learned, um, really it's more of an instinct. They haven't learned much of anything yet. We're just follow, watching them with our their body language. We saw, for example, little Miss Mamba was wandering around. So I knew, hey, she's probably looking for a bathroom. Might have been right, might have been wrong, but I just put her down and Mamba, of course, went right away, went to the bathroom. So she'll start to learn, hey, look for this place to go to the bathroom, because every time she needs to go, I put her there. So it's, it's basically a combination of me paying attention to their body language and realizing, hey, they need to go to the bathroom, so I put them in there, and them getting the habit of, hey, this little place, this is where I'm used to going to the bathroom. So as they mature, they'll start to look for this place.